This is a short follow-up to the previous video in which we argued that in the plane you can have at most two linearly independent vectors. And we came to that conclusion by considering all the possible configurations of three vectors in the plane and realizing that for one reason or another the set was linearly dependent. What about our space? Well, in our space that number is three. You can have at most three linearly independent vectors in the space. That's why it's called the three-dimensional space. And the way to convince yourself of that is by trying to visualize all the possible configurations of four vectors in the space and realizing that no matter their arrangement, there will necessarily be a linear dependence among the vectors. It could be of this variety, where any one of the vectors can be, excuse me, a linear combination of the rest. Or it could be of this variety where some of the vectors can be expressed as linear combinations of others, but not all of them. For example, if you have three vectors, let me see if I can do it, three vectors in the plane, and another vector, three vectors in the same plane, and then another vector not in that plane. Or there could be a zero vector in the mix and it's automatically a linear combination of other vectors. Or it's an arrangement like that, where two vectors are parallel to each other, collinear, and the rest point in completely other directions. So no matter their arrangement, the a set of four vectors will necessarily be linearly dependent. So the magic number for the space of our everyday physical existence is three, and that is why it's called the three-dimensional space.